Uh, atrial fibrillation is an irregular heart rhythm. It's very common. It affects uh, up to 10% of people above age 65. Uh, it has uh, a lot of implications on quality of life and also on longevity of the people affected. Uh, one of the main risks of being in AFib or atrial fibrillation is the development of blood clots inside the upper left heart chamber which might lead to stroke or other complications which could be fatal. It also affects the quality of life of the person affected and uh, a, a process of um, engagement and aggressive management will be beneficial in terms of prevention of the catastrophic complication of stroke and other uh, blood clot related complications as well as the improvement of the quality of life. People might experience palpitation or a fluttering sensation in their chest. Uh, they may feel uh, um, fatigued. They may feel anxious when they have atrial fibrillation or AFib, like we uh, tend to uh, say. Uh, however, a good number of people will be completely unaware of being in AFib. And, uh, they may discover being in AFib when they see a physician or they get examined or get an electrocardiogram, for example. AFib, uh, I kind of uh, liken it to having an electrical storm, like having um, a um, uh, a big storm with a lot of lightning and wind in the upper chamber of the heart, which is the attic of your house. So what happens in a situation like this, there is a, a, a lot of electrical activity happening without uh, regulation. Uh, normally, the upper chamber has uh, a beacon in it that we call the sinoatrial node. This beacon is responsible for sending a message to the rest of the heart to beat and this message is in the form of an electrical impulse. This beacon beats once every second or so. However, in AFib, the beacon is suppressed and instead you have an electrical storm that it keeps whirling around and around in the upper chambers, causing transmission of electricity to the lower chambers, the ventricles, in an irregular fashion at ir irregular intervals, thus causing the fast and irregular heartbeat characteristic of AFib. So um, attempts at correction of AFib included uh, trying to reset the heart or what we call electrical cardioversion. This is an electrical shock. Uh, it is successful sometimes and sometimes it's not. Medications have been tried uh, and uh, the success also with medications is limited sometimes. Uh, another way to um, reset the electrical storm and allow the normal beacon to kick in and perform its function is to create certain electrical barriers in the upper chamber and those barriers will channel the electrical impulse in a uh, predetermined fashion from one point to the other point in the upper chambers, thus forcing the storm to subside. And this is the principle of the so-called maze operation. The maze operation, the name maze, comes from the fact that those electrical barriers that are created are uh, created in such a way that will turn the tissue of the upper chambers like the plane of a maze or a labyrinth and the electricity here will be very much like a little mouse in the maze trying to get from one point to the other. So thus forcing the mouse to move in one direction instead of going round and round. Uh, that process could be achieved 
surgically by a process of making certain cuts or certain electrical burns in the heart tissue, upper chambers. It could also be achieved by using catheters to burn certain areas in the heart to also achieve the same mission. Um, we have um, been um, performing uh, the maze procedure here at uh, Union Hospital in Terre Haute now for about six years. Uh, we've uh, <clears throat> performed it in multiple configurations. That procedure could be offered to people if they require, for example, bypass surgery or require valve operation they, and they happen to be in atrial fibrillation. The maze principle and the maze procedure could be done at the same time, thus benefiting not just in terms of bypassing their coronaries, improving their perfusion, or correcting their valve problems, but also regulating their heart rhythm. It could also be done independent of that. There are a lot of people with atrial fibrillation who don't have a coronary problem, don't have a valvular problem, uh, and the AFib is uh, interfering with their quality of life and, and cardiovascular and overall health. And those people could be very good candidates to have the procedure that we call the mini maze or micro maze, which essentially involves making multiple small keyhole uh, openings on both sides of the chest cavity very similar to having like laparoscopic procedure in the belly. Uh, and uh, through those little keyholes, uh, we um, get in and apply certain uh, predetermined burns in the upper chambers, thus rendering the area conducive of a regular heartbeat. We have been actually very pleased to find out that it has worked extremely well uh, in our hands. Uh, the, um, our success rate of the maze procedure associated with a bypass or a valve operation exceeds 90% success in restoring the regular heartbeat. <clears throat> when it comes to the mini maze procedure, this is the, again the one that is done using thoracoscopic or laparoscopic-like keyholes, so-called minimally invasive procedure. Uh, this procedure also seems to have worked in better than 90% of our patients. And we have been pleased to find out that uh, because the national average for success is around 80%. However, in our own <clears throat> hands and in our own center, we found that actually our results have been uh, better than average. The first step is to discuss that with their physician. Uh, their primary care physician would be a good start. Uh, also, uh, in their discussion with their physician, I think uh, the person should take charge of the issue, uh, as in wanting to inquire more about uh, options of management, not just medications, but also talk about possibly uh, how can we go back to a regular rhythm if the medicine doesn't work within an uh, acceptable period of time. And the reason is, uh, the longer a person stays in a fib, the harder it gets for them to be restored back in a regular rhythm. So an early uh, intervention is very helpful, an early discussion is extremely good, and an early consultation with an electrophysiologist or a heart surgeon would be extremely helpful.